Can one of you guys lower this? Are you ready? Go ahead. Okay. Why did you Why did you run this article? Run this parody? It's satire that Hustler's been dealing with ever since uh, the magazine originated, and that's one of the reasons for its success is because of the irreverent iconoclastic uh, editorial appeal. What about your statement that you wanted to assassinate his integrity? When that position was given, I was in a federal penitentiary when I didn't think I should be there, and the Ninth Circuit agreed with me. So when, during that deposition, I answered each question the complete opposite as to what I should have, and I did it intentionally. Mr. Mr. Flynn, can you, first of all, describe the, the, the parody for us, for those of us who haven't seen it? Well, uh, the parody is based on a Campari ad where they get a celebrity to put their photograph in the corner and they talk about their first time. And it gives you the impression that they're talking about something with a sexual connotation, but it's really the first time that they uh, have tried drinking Campari. So uh, we had fall well doing the Campari. Campari uh, advertisement, but in a parody form, and we identified at the bottom of the page that it was an ad parody, and that it was not to be taken serious, and the jury agreed on that. Because, and what's he doing in the, in the because the because they found no lie. All we said his first time was with his mother in an outhouse, and you know he's always sloshed when he goes to the pulpit. You know, I mean, just ridiculous stuff that. You know, Falwell's lawyer said you know, this is the kind of uh, conduct that, or the kind of behavior that no one should have to put up with. That's the basically their argument. What do you say? Okay. Uh, one thing to say, and it's the only thing important, despite the arguments that went on today. The basic issue is if that jury's decision is allowed to stand, that means that any journalist or political cartoonist that does an article or a cartoon that is unfavorable to an individual, that person can sue. He doesn't have to prove libel. He can go in the courtroom and say, I know I wasn't liable by this, but it's upset my whole family. I've been seeing a psychiatrist. I haven't been able to sleep. So he, he is in a position to collect damages on emotional stress. Now, how can a free press function under those kind of conditions? And that's the issue here. And I think that's why that, uh, the Supreme Court agreed to hear the case is because they didn't want the Fourth Circuit, you know, setting that kind of precedence without a review. You should have been saying the more outrageous something is, the more unbelievable it is, the more immunized the publisher is. <laughs> It's magazines like Hustler that need protection of the First Amendment, not the Washington Post. We offend a lot more people than the Washington Post do. But I think that the First Amendment gives me the right to be offensive. And that's what the issue is here. Uh, my indictment is basically for bad taste. Yeah, but the question, what you seem to be saying is the more outrageous, the more unbelievable you, what you say is the more protected it is, because if it's believable, if it's believable, it would be libelous. Right. Yeah, sure, because he was asked on the witness stand uh, 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 if, he, if he took it serious when he read it, if he really thought, you know, that anybody felt that he had sex with his mother or got drunk when he went to the pulpet. Uh, here's my attorney, Alan Isaac. The more outrageous, the more outrageous it is, the more protected it is. It's not a question of more protected or less protected. It's either protected or it's not protected. If it's believable as a statement of fact, then it may not be protected. If it's not believable as an assertion of fact, then it's un then it is protected. I mean, it, you don't you think George? Forward, I can, I can here. Don't you think George Bush was upset when Doonesbury painted him as a wimp? He said that he was a basket case the rest of the day. Now he may have suffered serious emotional distress. Is he allowed to come into court? DC Follies every Saturday does a TV show on ABC. Saturday Night Live does a TV show. They have political skits all the time. Are the people in their, those political skits permitted to come in court and sue for intentional infliction of emotional stress? And, and the defense that, well, we didn't say anything factual about you, they'll say, we don't care. We don't care whether you say anything factual. You hurt our feelings. You caused us distress. And you can see the extreme that this case went to because Jerry Falwell, unlike what Larry Flint just said, 
uh, didn't even go get a psychiatrist. And he's, he's concerned, as he ought to be, about somebody getting a psychiatrist or a doctor coming in saying all these terrible things. He didn't get a psychiatrist. He didn't, he didn't miss a day of work. He didn't miss any sleep. He didn't lose any weight. Well, Mr. Tlant, uh, your, uh, your opponent in this case said uh, that this is speech that doesn't matter, that it shouldn't be protected because it's speech that doesn't matter. To live in a free society, you've got to pay a price, and that price is toleration. You have to tolerate things that you don't necessarily like. So the lay friends of the world have to be tolerated, and the Falwellians of the world have to be tolerated. And that's what the issue is. My speech is just as important as Jay Farwell's, probably more and more so. Under the you circumstances, really... if the press is going to be saddled with the result of this thing, are you are you sorry now that you started the whole thing? I I regret that I have brought this issue before the court, and that the national press could be affected by their decision. That uh, it makes me feel very badly. I, and, and I just hope that don't happen. Did you think that? Did you think that Jerry Falwell was liable proof when you did the parody? We knew he was a public figure, so we submitted the ad parody to our legal department. They approved it. I said, note at the bottom that it's an ad parody, not to be taken seriously. Thank so. you very much, Mr. Thank Clark. You. We appreciate Thank it. You.